Booka Booka. <laughs> isn't that isn't that a thing you always make the silliest noises when you're you're practicing, you're testing your mic? Oh, hold on. Twitch.tv. Where am I? Hold on. Twitch.tv. We're good? There we go. <laughs> I was a little worried. I'm getting some I'm getting some fun like what's the what's the term? Some network desync. I will no, that that makes it seem like I'm gonna drop the stream. I will talk more about it in three, two, one. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It is the B and stream today on this fine What day is it today? <laughs> 19th of February 2023. I hope it four. Oh my gosh. 2024. Oh no, what year is it? What day is it? I'm losing track. I hope you have you're having a wonderful week and we'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. Uh, let's not stutter anymore. Let's nail launching the game. Because uh, you came to see uh, some Spyro Year of the Dragon, you probably don't want to be looking at a intermission screen or an intro screen for too long. So let's jump over to it, shall we? Whoop! There we go. Get that audio. Get that audio. There's the video. There we go. Very, very nice. Uh, but yeah, no. Welcome everyone to the uh, middle of February. We are officially at that point when uh, Formula One is about to start next week. Uh, we've had a wicked storm in Sydney, uh, and, um, no, well, that's kind of it. We already had Valentine's Day, we already had the Year of the Dragon. Well, I guess Chinese New Year sort of keeps going on for a bit, and then someone's gonna say it's the whole year, man. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, but, yeah, no, it's been, it's been a good, a good solid week of things happening. Things happening all over the shop. Uh, but if you didn't catch the last stream, we landed perfectly at 25%. Uh, 25% is the perfect number. Hold on, let's keep readjusting the microphone until we're just in that convenient spot where I'm shouting right into it. I feel like this is about right. <laughs> we'll see. 25% uh, is the perfect spot where we can witness uh, how much of this world I have done, which is none of it. But we did the entirety of the previous world. So if I go uh, triangle, look at that. Whole world done. I, I have eight gems from somewhere because I ran through Sergeant Bird's base. We'll basically do the same thing this stream. We'll continue on and uh, and all that jazz. Let's pick up some goods. Other than that, you know. I have assessed the situation. We need five men to operate the Whirly Gig. We need five men to operate the Whirly Gig. Yes. So the goal of the, uh, the world, just like the previous one, you need to finish all five levels. Four Spyro levels and that Sergeant Bird level we've already done. So... Uh, we'll also have some, uh, some fun amounts of gems all around, because there's going to be like 500 gems in each level. Let's also use this as an opportunity to remind you of an old mechanic. Hey Spyro, Zoe told me that if we hit that doodad up there, the portal will open. Why don't you try spitting this rock at it? Uh, sure, yeah. Is that just like re reused from... There you go. <laughs> Hold on, can I stay in the perfect spot where I can keep picking it up and also, like, throw it at him? Ah, stop it. Um, but yeah, uh, if you've been in the Sydney area as of today, as of the 19th of February 2024, not 2023, uh, you might have encountered some wicked weather. Uh, you might have also seen some of that wicked weather uh, on the, the Bathurst 12 hour that happened yesterday. Which was fun. I'll see you in there later. Oh, okay. Okay, sure, okay. We'll explore the level in a little bit, but we need to explore the world. We need to pick up all the gems in the world. We've got all these rabbits here, we've got some... Boom. The music is a vibe, I tell ya. It's so funky, and it's very, very vibey. I, I super enjoy it. It makes it look like a wall, but I, I think it's just the, um, the bridge. And whatever weird texture they're using underneath. Uh, but yeah, no, the weather's been absolutely gnarly. We've had, like, crazy amounts of storms, uh, on the news report. They said four people? <laughs> are, like, not in critical condition, but, like, rushed off because they were all struck by lightning while in the same location. Like, four different blasts got each one. Probably there were more blasts, but, uh... Roughly in the same location they've been hit, so, uh, best, uh, best wishes to those fellas. Very, very unlucky. 
You know when they say lightning never strikes the same place twice? Uh, yeah nah. Yeah nah. Uh, there's a level chillin' here. We got, uh, perhaps one of... This might be the only ice in the whole game. I can't recall any other ice that... I guess that's the ice level. I think that's got ice. That's it. There's also a little cheeky... Cheeky, uh... Mingus? A little cheeky egg over here. Uh, but yeah, for me, I have my power go out all afternoon, which is good fun. Hooray. Um, so, uh... Unfortunately, I kind of came back right when I finished work. Today's a Monday, so I'm working, but unfortunately, it was out during lots of work. Uh... Yeah, kind of kind of crazy, kind of gnarly. Uh, fortunately, uh, or I'm... Sort of mixed fortunes, I guess. Uh, this made me start thinking about my uh, my self-hosted setup a fair bit more because uh, I I run a lot of stuff within my house, so it's like oh, it's actually kind of cool that like I've got a, a a lot of Wikipedia cached. I don't have all of it, and I actually really would like to um, to explore it a bit more. But yeah, I should actually like try to figure out hey, can I get uh, Wikiless to cache tangential pages ahead of time so I can just return those. And then, if I don't have an internet, just return me... I mean, if I don't have an internet, it does return me the cache pages, but, like, only invalidate the caches if it can actually get a new... Oh my gosh. If it can actually get a new page. Um, and then, in doing so, I might be able to have, like, an actual Wikipedia that's just, like, chilling there. Um, and not, like, a full Wikipedia, but just, like, the Wikipedia of, like, the pages that I care about. That'd be cool. Um... Or I could just crawl Wikipedia, one of the two. Yeah, no, that'd be, that'd be kind of cool. One thing I did realize that I was completely burnt by was uh, Spotify, because Spotify has a download limit to the number of devices that you can download songs to. And in order to deregister, devices that have downloaded songs, you need to go onto that device and get rid of the songs. I do not have many of those older devices. Uh, Spotify is effectively not letting me download anything to offline use. Hooray! Thanks Spotify. If only there was a better service that I could use. Uh, and I say that's somewhat, you know, actually if there was a better one. When you see a ladder, or walls that look climbable, just jump onto it, and you'll grab it with your claws. Nice, thank you. But, uh, yeah, I guess, well, I guess they didn't teach me about the ground pound, but it's like, eh, you know, that's another skill from Spyro 2 that we've got to sort of reintroduce. It doesn't come up too often, but it does come up in that one level, so. This area is just a bit of a ring. There's nothing really too much about it, and unlike the previous world, I guess it's, the previous world was like a ring as well, but unlike the previous world as well, uh, it doesn't just end. Like, uh, like this ring will go around and then it's like looking at a higher ledge. And there's a speedway over there. Uh, at this point, since I've already got so many eggs and gems, I don't exactly know which... What's the gem requirements for actually beating the game? I think, off the top of my head, either you need like around 75 or 100 eggs uh, in order to experience the end boss, I think. Nice, by the way. Uh, but I can't tell you off the top of my head um, how many are needed you know, as we go through the game. Because as I went through the game, I just 100% everything. I don't know what the game's like when you don't do things. Hi Spyro, this is a super flame power-up. You'll find more just like it scattered throughout all the worlds. Why don't you try this one out by using it to break all these planters? I think I saw a Rhinoc hide an egg in one of them. Okay, sure thing. So get yo yo super flame. And you can super flame these things. Can you get all four? Let's see. Can you get all four without losing the super flame? Probably. Man, I'm, I've just been leaving gems all around. Uh, there's this hard chest over here, which is very nice that they've just casually tucked it away. Oh, that would be the only gem left as well. Uh, but yeah, so I, I'm seeking a, a better 
way to have my content offline. Um, I know technically Spotify is like, no, you must be online and logged in and log in every 30 days and stuff, which I love how your devices still count even when they're not logged in. Oh look, an egg. And now it's a crispy egg. Matt, more like, uh... Materials on fire. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. Uh, but there we go, 5 out of 5, 400. There we go. Well done. We don't need to do any levels, do we? <sighs> uh, but let's do the levels in, uh, sort of visual order, because I might as well, because I've already got Sergeant Bird chilling there. Let's start off with the Enchanted Towers. Woo! I actually, I do like this level a fair bit. Those crummy Rhinox forced us to build a statue of the sorceress. Then after we built it, she complained it was too ugly. If you ask me, the statue is much prettier than she is. Thank you, my man. Even if you're using the same accent as a uh, guy from Spyro 2. And it's also playing the Sergeant Bird music. Uh, these guys are gonna be a bit of pain, but hey, you know, they taught you the mechanic before you went into the level. Pick up the things, spit them at the enemies. If you can nail them, you're good. You can also sort of, I think you can, can you actually just do the jump shoot? Maybe. But they go up a bit too high if you try to get them, you know, normally. You could also just completely ignore them, because I'm very certain that there's a better way to take them out. Also, the gems will just fall off ledges. And then you saw I just picked it up all of a sudden. Oh my gosh. Uh, that leads into possibly uh, one of the greatest things someone found out. Uh, some speedrunner, I forgot the name, you're gonna have to apologize. <laughs> I apologize on that one. Um, but there's a, there's a tweet around this. Found a brand new Spyro Year of the Dragon uh, speedrunning exploit, or at least something that you could do. Um, from what I could tell, they were in, uh, the Sunny Villa, the first-ish uh, level of the game. I think it was actually the third one in their run. They do, a uh, uh, the, um, uh, Cloudy Spires first, and then they'd go off and unlock Sheila and do that level. This is in the 100% run as well, so, uh, this probably isn't, like, too groundbreaking in that run, but it might actually come up in the, the lower percent runs. Um, pretty much they were in Cloudy, uh, sorry, in, um, Sunny Villa, and, uh, there's, uh, the big guys, one of them standing, uh, a bit too close to the ledge in just the original version of the game. If you flame him, uh, he will fall off, just fall off the ledge, actually, as opposed to just, you know, dying because of the flame animation. Uh, when he does that, the player also managed to get hit by another large enemy at that exact same time. And then for the next half second, every frame, the game thought, yeah, you just picked up a green gem. And a green gem would just magically appear and they'd just suddenly get two gems out of nowhere for half a second, which meant they had like 50 gems all of a sudden. Comes out of nowhere. Uh, also, I, I apologize because uh, it's either one or all of these missiles, when it hits the statue, it's very loud. But I love how it goes. Yeah, no, oh, it's, it's, it's all of them. <laughs> I don't know if that's just, like, emulator being wrong or if that's real hardware being like that, but, uh, it's sort of funny. I like it. Yeah, let me shoot you, come on. Oh, hi there. <laughs> I like these big guys as well. But yeah, very surprised that there's a new uh, speedrunning strat just casually on this game. The world breathlessly awaits my brilliant four-dimensional masterpiece. Just light all the rockets and prepare to be amazed by my genius. I'm amazed by my ears. Well, let's, uh, oh, where did, where did the rocket go? There it is. Make me deaf again. <laughs> Alright, once more. Once more for the crowd.
Oops. I forgot I hid this egg inside the statue. I hope the explosion didn't hard boil it. What's his name? Peanut? Peanut? Yeah, so, yeah, very, very surprised there's a new speedrunning strat. Also, that is the end of the level, I guess, because yeah, we destroyed the statue. But of course, there's still a lot more to, to see and do, so don't worry. We're not, we're not done just yet. Now, if it wasn't for the gem requirements, this game would probably be very quick. Uh, there's a lot of these ledges around, you'll probably notice. Um, if we do the jumps and we manage to jump into this hole, find ourselves into a little secret area. Looky here, looky here. Everyone likes a good secret area. That's right, there's more skateboarding for us. Isn't this the wildest skateboard park you've ever seen? Once you've mastered a few tricks, you can score huge points in this place. What do you say I show you some moves? Yeah, this is actually like a Let's very high scoring location. Easy. You can jump off the end of ramps by pressing the X button. I'll show you how to do it once, then it's your turn. So kind of interestingly, I guess Hunter just shows you how to do stuff and proceeds to have crazy, crazy gravity. Although, I probably have the same thing. Okay, now try doing a roll. You can roll in midair by holding down the triangle button and steering left or right. Give us a sick roll. Whoa. Oh, I did three. Hey, nice roll. Now let's see you pull a flip. Flips are exactly like rolls, only you push up or down instead of left or right. Just jump off the ramp, hold down the triangle button, and push up or down on the directional pad. I love his pants, I'll tell you that. And he only wears it in the skateboarding as well. Woo! Woo! Whoa, you must be a natural. Now let's see if you can pull off a half pipe spin move. The blue ramps are half pipes. Well, you actually, it's a, a quarter pipe, but sure. At the top of the blue ramp, then steering left or right in the air. Uh. <laughs> All right, you nailed it. Now let's see if you can do a 900. Get as much height as you can, spin Was two and a half revolutions in the air, and land back on the ramp. Alright, here he goes, here he goes. Whoa! Seriously, if Tony Hawk's a legend for doing a 900... You know, we got, we got Hunter here. We don't need no Tony Hawk. There we go. Wow. Now that was a 900. I have to admit, you've got some skills, Spyro. But before you get too cocky, let's see if you can score some real points on the giant ski ramp. Do whatever moves you want and see how many points you can get. There we go. One last one for good measure. Whoa. <laughs> There you go. Wow, you learn really fast. Then again, you are being trained by a master boarder. Speaking of which, I was just practicing a <laughs> nearly impossible border. new move that I call the Nasty Nork. I had almost pulled it off when I suddenly ran smack into this dragon egg and wiped out. Okay, I made that up, but you can have this egg. Sure, okay. There you go. Sweet Caroline. Give me that, like, terrible trap remix one, where it's like in a minor key. You're ready to try some one-on-one -on -one competition. Want to try a freestyle competition for points? All right, whoever scores the most points in the time limit wins. Here we go. So all we gotta do is just be Hunter. I'm reminded of the, uh, the crystal popcorn. Uh, Hunter is not as good as me, but he will try. Oops. Uh, there's also a score record on this, uh, level. It's, um, 
10,000? Hunter's managing to do some rolls, I'll tell you that. The trick is, you want to come up to this ramp because uh, that very, very massive ramp is actually very, very nice to do crazy amounts of backflips. Or spins. There you go. And you can do an orange crush for getting uh, five spins in a row. Which is uh, pretty much going to guarantee a win, isn't it? Yeah. Whoops. That could have gone better. That could have gone a lot better. We'll just go back up. He'll never notice. He'll never notice. <laughs> um, yeah, no. New speedrunning uh, strat is always good fun. And I'm always amazed at how ingenious speedrunners are. Oops. Okay, now... I he said don't get cocky. What am I doing? I'm getting cocky. I'm trying my triple rolls and he's doing like flips all over the place. He's doing the right kinds of flips as well. <laughs> so, uh, I think you gotta do the, the 10,000 separately though. There you go. Three, four. There you go. Got my spine, I got my orange crush. Two, three, four. There you go. I can't believe it. How did you get so good already? Who knows? Someday you might even break my course record. One day. Nah. <laughs> anyway, I guess I should give you this other egg I found. I was going to keep it for a pet, but I can't get it to hatch. <laughs> this is the future of our species, Hunter. What are you doing? <laughs> oh well, so. Uh, oh my gosh, we got we got more fighting bubbles. Very nice, very, very nice. Uh, so there's lots of gems around here, but let's have a crack at that record, shall we? Alright, right up here. Let's try and get some of those easy immediate points. Going down the slope. Two, three, four, five. Easy. Let's do it again, because you only get you get half the points, but it's like how many points is that in like one go? Like nearly three thousand? And it's the big gulp and not the big crush, so there you go. You just do that like twice, pretty much nail like so many points. Easy, keep going. Oops. I'd probably pop you out like 9,000 right off the bat by doing four quad spins. Oops. Okay, we'll just do some rolls. I'm still going fast. I'm still going fast. Hey. Yeah, <laughs> 10,000 is. Shockingly easy on this one. Oh. There we go. Like, cause, cause your momentum, somehow it sticks. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but... I guess it does. Let's see if we can do some, uh, some twisted rolls. Other than that, I mean, that's the skill point. 10,000. Very, very easy record to go for. And it's just cause this ramp. It's all the momentum, it's great. I love the environment though, it's good fun. Ah, oh, come on, where's my, where's my excessive flips? Some of these gems are a little bit iffy to get though, because they're on these like weird ledges up here. There you go. No sweat, Hunter. No sweat on that record. There's also this kind of interesting uh, spot here for a half pipe. I like it. Quarter pipe, sorry. <laughs> how how are we gonna how are we gonna land up here? Let's see if we can maybe jump and that'll break the momentum. There you go. I got that one. <laughs> can we get the other gem? I think I might need to jump on that side. What do you say? Let's give it a go. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, lots of lots of things in the uh, in in uh, recent developments. I want to just briefly touch on. Uh, I know I've talked about developing a set for Singsar. Uh, basically done. I'm just trying to get the community to help with the QA testing because uh, there's so many combinations of songs and things. So it'd be good to get people to catch that. But hey, you know, okay. in theory, I could just release whenever. We'll see. But I do want to. Maybe get some people to help catch some things first. Uh, but yeah, I've started work on the steel a little bit, and it's just like, oh my gosh, the memory is simple. It's just, it's just there. There's an array of everything I need. Woo! Oh my gosh. Okay, a little bit fast. A little bit fast. Uh, any other gems? Oh, the towers, of course. How could I forget? The towers. You can jump on the towers, and amazingly, you get triple towers. You get a thousand points just for jumping on the towers. It's very, very nice. I like it. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, overall, I would say SingStar has been an absolute learning experience. It's, uh, it's not exactly the most straightforward game to develop for. Um, and it certainly isn't the easiest to learn the PS2 uh, toolset and stuff on. But yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I, I try and, and it works, I think. It should do what it should do. So that's all good in the end. Uh, but yeah, oh boy. It's, it was a lot of just investigating pointer chains and callback functions all over the shop. Um, so you'd never really know where things get executed from because it always keeps moving around and nothing's like static. Um, also, if you come up here, hang on. Ain't that a bit of a reused thing? And what's going on here? The balloon float around? There's a lot of stuff in the high grounds on this level, but uh, if you take a bit of a dive over here, you'll land on another platform where you'll have these fellas just chilling here. And they're sort of all over the shop and, I don't know, it seems a little tricky. But if you come up here, well, uh, if you got Sergeant Bird, you can come in here. I'm ready to patrol the towers and the perimeter of the islands whenever you want me to. It's good to be back in action. And this is the kind of interesting uh, part where instead of Sergeant Bird being in a side area, he just goes back into the level. All these enemies that were flying, a hey, easy source. It also closes off a couple of a uh, couple of doors, so because that would have been a portal to some other side area, and uh, you can't go in it. Sergeant Bird is locked into, well, he's locked and loaded, but he's also locked into doing what he needs to do. I got a snipe shot or something on this guy. Oh, hi. And you keep getting those gems as always. Uh, but in particular, you're gonna need to get uh, get him to come around because he needs to be the one picking up most of the bones. You're doing great. Please find the rest of the bones so we can put my friend back together. Why is he, why is he broken again? What's he doing up here? This is a very curious ledge. We like to call this just reusing an environment. We literally did the exact same side quest, but we put it behind Sergeant Bird. Hey, I don't mind. I don't mind. They make these games so, like, frequently as well. Like, they, you know, it was one a year. I don't mind a bit of recycle mechanics from time to time. Especially when it's like contextually, hey, it's a fun different level, and there's a chest that I can't open because I can't ground pound. This one's probably a pain if you uh, don't get all of them on a single, like if you leave the level at any point. Uh, I assume there's just a ceiling here. This is an Aquarius Towers. <laughs> there's no, no weird thing you need to collect at the top there. But there's a bunch of these where it's like, yeah, there actually is like a ledge just casually chilling up here. It almost looks like there's supercharged ramps everywhere as well, but uh, I don't think there is. Yeah, like if you come in here, one of the bone lads is up here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, Vasil, I'm I'm having a good crack at it. We'll 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 see how long it takes. I don't really know 
it might be very straightforward, given that I know of a way to cheat the game in memory. Because that's the thing, is that when you're developing achievements, you don't have to actually, like, really play the game legit. As long as you're aware why or what you're cheating, what you're doing, you cheat in. Because if you play the game legit, it's like, oh, I gotta do, a, like, a strategy game for every single time I want to test anything. It's painful. So, you, you, you know, you figure it out, you, you debug, you put the values in that you expect, and... Yeah, if it all works out, then sweet. That's that's what you do. You know, for a level called Enchanted Towers, um, I was expecting more magic. <laughs> I just seem to build some stuff and call it a day. It. I love the draw distance on this one though. It's very fun, and being able to like fly around is a is a great feeling. I tell you. This probably took, like, some, some, like, wicked effort as well to have, like, this amount going on in the levels. Because, again, I feel like the levels themselves have a fair bit going on. Maybe, you know, a handful of Spyro 2's levels might be about the same size, but, like, you know, they really, they really put in some good work. And then it's, like, wicked LOD swapping all over the place. But that's the beauty of it. That's the fun part about the level design. Uh, so, yeah. So me doing- me making retro achievement sets, uh, hasn't exactly dragged me away- or well, it's dragged me away a little bit, but it hasn't fully dragged me away from, uh, playing some games. Uh, the only one I've really committed to actually beating is, uh, the Need for Speed Carbon set on the PS2. Uh, the set's kinda interesting because you've gotta sort of play through the game a couple of times. The- the game starts off in a bit of a curious way because you, uh, you get a choice of, uh, starting with either a well, one of three different car varieties. There's tuna cars, which are basically like Skyline and uh, like that kind of stuff, like Japanese import cars. There's exotic cars, which is pretty much just not American. And then there's muscle cars, which is basically American. Um, it's technically not quite that. All the cars sort of perform... Mm, actually, do they perform about the same? Generally, the tuners are the grippiest and the slidiest, and the muscle cars are generally the, like, the best horsepower, but uh, it's only general because it doesn't really apply most of the time. The weird part about Need for Speed Carbon, though, is that it comes right off the heels of uh, Here, Most Wanted. This. I was going to keep it as a souvenir, but I don't have room in my luggage. <laughs> okay. Oh, he's been stealing the eggs. Like everyone, I guess. Everyone's been stealing the eggs. I know, right? My friend is feeling much better now. Oh no! He started his bone dance again. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's right, we're doing this again. <laughs> hey, it's worth seeing multiple times, I tell ya. There he goes. There he goes. Oh, almost. So close. So close. Thank you, my man. Thank you. Uh, let's just do one quick fly around just to make sure I picked up everything. I think that should be good. Like, there's a lot of high ledges that you can still kind of reach anyways. But it's just making sure that I don't have anything lingering around as Sergeant Bird. I think we're good. I think we're good. Uh, also, if you are very curious, if you go down the pit as Sergeant Bird, it's like, oh... Oh, uh, where did this come from? It even stops the, the audio because they know. They know you're in the, the loading screen prompt. But you can't invoke it, unfortunately. It's all lost. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, Carbon came out like immediately after Need for Speed Most Wanted. Uh, pretty much a very similar engine. I'm ready to patrol the towers and the perimeter of the islands whenever you want me to. And then you're gonna tell them no. I'll be here when you need me. There we go. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a curious game because it came out so close after Most Wanted, and yet it's like, it just doesn't understand why Most Wanted is great. Um, it is a fun section. I was playing catch with my pet wolf, Farley, 
but I accidentally threw his ball down this hole, and he went in after it. Now he's stuck down there. I feel so helpless, sitting up here, listening to his steadily softening whimpers. Don't cry, wolf. Never cry, wolf. <laughs> okay, sure. But I, I, I love the, the, the layout of this section, because it's like, okay, so you gotta go down the hole. What are we in for? And the answer is, oh, there's a little puppo. Little puppo. And he wants you to, to spit his bowl. Which, by the way, hey, it's we're still in the level that was teaching you about spitting things. They just threw every single spitting mechanic into this one level. So what you gotta do? You put the ball on the button. It'll go, ah yes, I wanna be on that. And then you also wanna stand on this. Although, well, I guess it doesn't really matter here. But you wanna be in a position where him standing on buttons allows you to press buttons of your own. <laughs> also chasing this guy, very nice. Um, but yeah, no, it, it came out right after Need for Speed Most Wanted, but it misses the point. And I think the point is integrating police chases into the main gameplay. Even if, uh, progression-wise, it's a little bit weird in, um, in, uh, Most Wanted, because it's just like, ah, yes, this person won't come out and, and face you. Uh, for reference, you've got to shoot the ball all the way over there while being on the button. Because you can jump over this ledge, but he can't. Now we get into the fun, like, what is this, Portal 2? Oops. Just dive right off. Uh, Need for Speed Carbon has absolutely no incentive to do any of the cop chasing. It will just casually happen, you want to just get away from the cops, and then you move on. Because the entire game's progression is just tied around doing so many of the events. Okay, so you can see that if you press this button, it'll lower this platform. If you can shoot quite right, it'll jump on the platform, and you can time it, sort of, right to ride it up. Ideally, though, you do this in two goes, so you drop the platform, and then you use that ledge to jump over here and then do a second shot. But, uh, doing it in one shot is very nice. What is it, boy? Jimmy fell down the well? I just... <laughs> Charge into a wall. And then there's uh, one magical door, and then, oh, look, we're back! Hey! You found Farley! How can I ever thank you? I mean, I could give you this old egg, but Farley's been chewing on it, and it's kind of slimy. Oh well, it's the thought that counts, right? Oh well! <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't even know what to say about it, it's like, oh, it's egg. Okay, so there's our six eggs. That's right, so many eggs. Actually, I think all the levels have six eggs. We've got our bone dance still going on in the corner, but we still need to pick up, like, 40 gems, and I know that they're all sort of scattered around, but... Let's see if we can easily find them. Uh, I need to be on... The high ledge, so I guess, uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, where was that balloon? That wasn't there, like, moments ago, was it not? I never thought I'd be able to get up here, but I did. There we go. Uh, but yeah, uh, other than that, I, like, I, I, I find the game's alright, but it's a little uninteresting, and, uh, Weirdly, um, it's kind of easy to beat the game with only, like, buying one other car. You just buy, like, a tier 2 car at some point, and not really, there's not really any restrictions on which car you buy, because eventually, eh, the upgrades sort of work. And, uh, yeah. But you could buy the best car, and then sort of breeze it. The AI rubber band's very hard. Ah, oh, can I not get that? Do, do I have to just come out as... Sergeant Bird again. Let's see, uh, is there anything I can do to, to increase my height? Like, I want to just jump on that, but no. Okay, we'll have to swap back to Sergeant Bird. Darn, I can't believe I missed that balloon. Oops, jeez. Oh no, the first death of the, the playthrough. 
<laughs> very, very needless death as well. But sure, okay. I'm yeah, 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 I gotta I need you to shoot one balloon. <laughs> What's this, balloons? It's a penguin, not a monkey, I guess. But yeah, is that balloon just always there and I just missed it? Yeah, totally was. And I'll drop a fiver and then I'll be done. There we go. Uh, but yeah, I don't have a ton to say about it. Um, I wish. What else about it? Uh, the canyon levels are, all, are pretty alright, but yeah, at some point the the I don't know the track variety kind of wears thin on me. There's only so much that you could do out of city tracks, and it kind of feels like there's less variety than Need for Speed Most Wanted. Also, much less variety in the cars themselves, and uh. I don't think there's as much incentive to really go out and buy different kinds of cars, because the game rubber bands so hard, it's it's no easier or harder, really, throughout the game, other than it's a little bit harder, you need a better car, but that's about it. Like, once. I just, I just like this scene set up, like, oh, we're just peering over our shoulder. Five, four, three, four, five. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was like 10 pages, you don't know what happened in the middle. Dead. <laughs> we should help her. You're kidding, right? She nearly toasted you. Yeah, but she was aiming at you. Oh. This is a vor free stream. Oh, there he goes. Bonk. Oh, oh. Nice. No problem. It's a good thing for you Hunter was around. I can look after myself. Oh, sure you can. Would you like me to show you? Cloud of magic, huh? How about I give you a jump start? Ha! Huh, I'll deal with you later. Well, there she goes. Hey, why'd you have to scare her off? <laughs> it just happens. We'll, we'll, we'll build into it. I, I like these just fun little cutscenes that happen in the middle of the, the story as well. Because I felt like... Mm, there wasn't really enough of a... I don't know, like if you're going to say, oh, what, what's something about Spyro 2 that could have been better? It's like, yeah, there's not much that the characters do other than... Well, especially Laura. She, don't, she rarely shows up. Hunter's at least all over the shop. Just curious why he's just chilling around. Ain't, yeah. <laughs> Here we go, the icy peak. Everyone's gotta have an icy level. Everyone. If there's no ice level, what are you doing? Look at this dude! I was supposed to meet Doug to go ice fishing today, but Rhinox have blocked the path with ice, so I can't get through. I've been trying to clear the way with this cannon, but it doesn't even shoot straight. I haven't been able to hit a dang thing on morning. <laughs> What a very, very, very curious accent. The darn northerners or and or Canadians. Uh, I like this level, it's good fun. I like these enemies with the TNT boxes. It's very croc core. I very, very like it. Uh, flaming without letting them touch you or sometimes it's just the box itself. Uh, and you got all these cannons around, which are basically the same cannons as Spyro 2. There's nothing really too weird about them. You can shoot uh, the ice. You can shoot uh, the birds. Which probably would want to shoot the birds. Hold on. There you go. And the gems come at ya. It's in 3D. Look at that. Woo. We'll get over there in a bit. And by in a bit, I mean now. The music is a vibe on this one as well. It's jamming, it's grooving. There we go. But, uh, but yeah, 
What other? What else has been going on in the world? Uh, so uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about a controversial topic, which is uh, remasters of old games. And I know it's not really controversial to say, ah, oh, remasters. Uh, let's talk about one in particular. The Tomb Raider 1, 2, and 3 remaster is... F well done. <laughs> oh, I picked it up. We got it in the end. It got there in the end, but... Oh, that was a bit, that was a bit odd, wasn't it? Oh. Uh, the Tomb Raider 1, 2, and 3 remaster just came out. It's on all Z platforms. And uh, super duper appreciate as well. The original versions of the games are still out for sale. So you don't have to choose whether you want to buy a version that doesn't support any existing mods or maps or whatever. Actually, it might exist maps. I don't know. Um, but I'm pretty certain it's a, it's a full recreation. Um... Keep this room in mind, by the way. You can see that there's a door up there, but there's something very, very important that you probably, on your first playthrough, you're just gonna be like, oh. Like, once you find out what's going on. And if you do know, this is the level where I definitely take a lot of just, like, loose hits all over the shop as well, <laughs> I tell ya. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, okay, so when I say controversial, what exactly is wrong with the Tomb Raider 1, 2, and 3 remaster? Uh, for the most part, nothing really. It's actually like a pretty one-for-one -one remaster. Uh, all the levels are exactly the same, and for the most part, uh, the controls try to be exactly the same. Some people hate the, uh, the, act well, I guess, some people will say it's aged, which to some degree it has, yes, but it's also a remaster of a game from the 90s. I don't really need a, you know, a reimagining or... I, I don't know. Reimaginings are okay as well, but like, you gotta be open what you're doing. You use the cannons to blow up. There's two sheets as well. You gotta be careful about that one. You can shoot the egg, it doesn't really do anything. And uh, there's one up here. And let's get that bird while we're at it. Get him! There you go. 3D. <laughs> Now you can't deal with that high ledge just yet, but shooting that does save your, your butt in a little bit, so that's all good. Um, I think that, you can probably spot what's going on down there, I'll tell you that though. Uh, but, uh, but I think more controversially, the remaster does two things that some people will probably have uh, a bit of a gripe with. Uh, number one is it uses AI to upscale textures. Uh, I think the models are entirely redone. Lara is definitely a lot less pixelated, but generally still along the same lines of her original designs. Um, it it kind of feels like a bit of an Xbox 360 quality as well, like the, the models, they're not tons detailed. I actually think that's quite fair, like you probably don't want the most ultra realistic Lara uh, in the world in a game where the surfaces are still all incredibly polygonal, uh, because that's what the level design is. It just, it, it needs to be that way. There's some bits which uh, they have improved on the graphics, like there's foliage and other kinds of uh, very decorative bits that don't get in the way of uh, of the um, the you know the models of the world. But uh, for the most part, yeah, the models of the world are still all fine. The textures have been AI upscaled in quite a lot of places. They have not been um, exactly redone or repainted, but rather they took the original textures in their blurry qualities in some cases and just went boom AI upscale this has led to some quirky things I think most notably uh, some looping textures don't really loop anymore because the AI upscaling didn't really know they were meant to loop sometimes it's okay sometimes it's not and it really depends and it's kind of a bit of a shame that like they couldn't just afford to have some artists to paint some higher resolution textures I, like, I don't know, in my mind it'd be a little easier to base it off something that already exists. You know, I don't know. Uh... Someone would also say, like, oh, like, using AI is a cheap shot, whatever, like, and I somewhat feel like... I don't know, it, Embracer Group's budget could to totally, uh... Totally do that, but, I don't know. Maybe they wanted to go crazy budget, maybe this was, like, Three people's love child. Um, I appreciate there's a button. There's a button in game to just switch between the uh, very old style graphics for the most part 
and uh, new remastered stuff as well. So if you do like the old aesthetics, uh, you still can look at them. So that's all good. Um, also, I guess, yeah, it's got all the levels from all the bonus sections. The unfinished business, the Tomb Raider 2 Gold, and the, the, the Lost Artifact uh, sections. They're all remastered as well, which is nice. Um, but what I think is a little curious as well is that, uh, yeah, point number two of what makes this remake a little bit ooh, uh, or remaster a little bit ooh, is, uh, is a content warning when you start the game. I know someone's going to say, oh, what do you mean? It's like 10 seconds. It doesn't matter. But, like, why? Are we going to, we got to say that, like, Tomb Raider 2 is apparently offensive. There's some depictions. Now, what it probably is, is that, you know, there's a lot of stereotypes. You know, there's, a, there's an Australian, he's got the most, like, Crocodile Dundee kind of accent, like that kind of, like, whatever. There's native Bengal Indians that are cannibals. Uh, and I'm very certain they say Unga Bunga or something along the lines. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, Okay, so there's two things you gotta do up here, which means you gotta come back here twice. Uh, this is the first one. Give me very Wizard Peak vibes, does it not? Now, for an ice level, you're expecting more ice. It's, it's pretty... Uh, I was gonna say it was pretty chill. Oh, no. Oh, no, pun. But, I don't know, I'm kind of the person who's like, uh... You have to tell me that you got... Oh, he's got the Riz! The Riz! And he's a puppy, apparently. How to make things cute, just make them puppies. That's always how it how it do be. Um, but I don't know. I like. I see some people in my timeline try to make this a, like a much more of a socio-political statement, and I'm like, I don't know. Other than, do we have to clarify that Tomb Raider is clearly not a depiction of reality, and therefore we can be a little bit more extravagant with our depictions of the world. If anything, I kind of like how. Tomb Raider's always been a bit of a world tour, you know, like, uh, it's a very tourist angle of, of, like, all these cultures, which I, I think is part of its charm. Alright, so by the way, we're on this uh, upper ledge, uh, and the part that you have to note is, uh, do you see that there's cracks there? You just have to call out that you ground pound here. You can't ground pound while you're on the skates because you can't jump. If you're pro enough, you could actually do a glide. And then do the ground pound right there, but I want to do it legit. Also, I love how this is technically they built an upside down room. Someone would say Castlevania Symphony of the Night much. I would say Rugrat Search for Raptor very much. One of those I've played on stream. And yeah, you're trapped under ice. Do 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 do. It's just for a bunch of gems, but I, I like it. It's good fun. Camera's trapped under ice as well. Uh, but yeah, I, I, uh, like, I don't, <laughs> I don't see the value in a content warning where it's not particularly taking a jab or really an insult at other cultures. Like, yeah, like, is it, is it a uncharacteristic depiction? Probably, but isn't, like, everything? Like, are we going to say Far Cry 5 is an unrealistic depiction of the US? And someone will say, no, what do you mean? It's accurate. It's like, hey, you, see what, you see where we're going with on this one. <laughs> In before, I, I've not played a Far Cry after 3, so if they actually do have content warnings, I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, the rules of this is simple. Egg Thief. Jason. Supercharge. Go for it. There's actually multiple Egg Thieves as well. Also, if you're... Uh, Oh, well, I missed it, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to re-mention it. I got this kind of interesting loop going on as well. Also, one thing I really, really love is that even the- hold on, okay, bonus points. See how many lives I have, 17. If you fall off, look what happens. They don't take off lives in this section. The level designers are geniuses, and by geniuses, I mean they're very, very courteous, because it's, it is kind of easy to fall off here. A lot of the ledges are a little bit, like, right on the edge. So if you're jumping at a bit of an odd time, you will miss it. Um, it is a very tricky supercharged section, because you got to kind of keep working a little bit of speed as you go along. And he does go whatever path he feels like. I'm not really too sure what's going on here, but there you go. One whole egg thief. This is 
very pretty Betty. Betty's just one of those names. Now let's go for thief number two. Woo! Up and around and round we go. It's probably a little trickier. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. To me, I didn't feel like Tomb Raider 1, 2, or 3 were taking a jab at really anything. So a content warning makes it seem like it should be taking a jab. Is it? It's not, right? It's just a fun two of the world kind of game. With platforming and, and over the top elements. Also, did you catch that? There's a wall of ice somewhere along that uh, that's that bit, and you just gotta supercharge into it at some point. So I just recommend, yeah, hug the wall. Oh, hug the wall at some point around there. You'll you'll probably hit it. Uh, but yeah. Now let's let's get into the actual controversy period of uh, of, of the show. Apparently, um, I don't know. I I I, I would say uh, let's like it's not really the end of the world to get really upset about really anything I talk about on. On stream, but uh, yeah, the part that I would like to get a little controversial about is that ModDB uh, have taken down a guy's mod for literally uh, skipping that part. Skipping the disclaimer that the game is indeed offensive. You start up the game, you go through the logos, and you immediately hit, uh, well, the title. You don't have to, like, wait through a, this game might be offensive screen. Is that the prerogative of whoever made the mod and whoever wants to download it? I say 100%. You can have a mod do the most distasteful things. I don't care. It's a mod. You mod the game how you want to mod it. And I really think game publishers and the community really shouldn't care too much about what's in mods as long as it's not using, uh, I guess, copywritten material and particularly uh, protected material. So things like... Uh, you know, like, if you're gonna have a mod that includes copywritten songs, it's like, I get it! I prefer a very copy-left attitude, but it's like, ah, oh, no, I, I get it. Uh, does your mod also ruin the image of the game? Um, well, in this case, certainly not. I don't think anyone really, like, you only know that the disclaimer is there if you either look it up or... Whoa, whoa, oh, heck yeah. That was some good, good pacing. This is a very tricky one. This took me quite a while. Uh, the first go. Woo! <laughs> this is this is exactly what I talk about with controversies. Uh, just two eggs uh, going on, but uh, if yeah, if you hit that uh, that one bit, there you go. Let's have a better view. If you hit the one bit of ice, oh, I've also got to charge into it. Do I? There you go. Nice and easy gems there. Uh, let's go one step further though. Oh, oh, okay. Let's go one step further. If you're around this wall, you might spot. There being nothing because it's not this wall. It's it's backwards from that wall. It's casually a couple of gems to hint at what's going on, but then it's like, ooh! And I love this. It goes up, it goes up, and it goes right up to the top. And you get on top of uh, this building and you get you know, a bunch more gems. Now, turn your eyes around. And see the little tiny pedestal. Little tiny pedestal that's going there. Can you land on it? And the answer is yes. And if you do, there's a skill point in for you. That's your skill point for the level, by the way. Jumping on that. I like this section. It's good fun. Now I'm going to supercharge all my way out. Uh, also, greetings, Blub. I'm sorry I missed your message because uh, they appear very tiny on my screen. I'm sorry. Do I have? I don't have timestamps enabled on my local chat, and I really should. Hold on. Let me get it. Where's, where's my... All the hidden parts is level very nice. Yeah, they are very cool. Uh, where are... Where is my timestamps? Anyways. Two minutes ago. I missed it! Uh, yeah, yeah. Timestamp for new messages. It completely... I don't know why OBS always turns off my timestamps. Because then I feel very bad. If I see a message and then I just, like, never acknowledge it, it makes it me feel so much worse. <laughs> I put up ice blocks this morning so Bob wouldn't beat me to the ice fishing hole. If you want to try out the hole, you can borrow this fishing lure I've been using. Fishing lure. Chat. Oh, by the way, feel free to use our gondola whenever you want. <laughs> oh my gosh, the accent. So yes, you can indeed. Take the gondola. 
and it will ride down. Very, very nice. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I people should be able to mod the games pretty much for for the most part. I, there's a degree of modding, you know, ruining the image of a game. Uh, and I feel like mm, as long as it's within taste and or completely separate, like as in if the mod makers make it very clear that a mod is completely unrelated to the source material, which a lot of the times they do, and a lot of times people are very aware of anyways, mm, it's a lot more free reign than if you tried to pass off your Pokemon ROM hack as ultra violent, ultra gory, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, if you said, hey, you know, it's a Pokemon ROM hack, but it's like, you know, I don't know, it's just for funsies. Don't look too much into it. Also, it's been a hot moment since we've seen this guy. Right up, Spyro. Behind this door is the single greatest show on earth. That's right, ice dancing. Ooh. Season tickets are available, but you'll have to act fast. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I People buying Taylor Swift tickets. Sort of oh, oh! Well, oh. <laughs> the show's about to start. What is with money bags and like the very like underhanded like dialogue going on there? I'm a cultured sort of dragon. This is a bit of an interesting mini game. Hi there. Tonight is my big ice dance performance, and these hacky players are ruining these it. These hacky players. Every time I start my routine, they come in and smack me with their sticks. Oh, I sure wish I had a partner. Someone courageous and strong and handsome and purple who breathes fire. Nice. Will you please help me perform my ice dance? These mean Reinick khaki players keep hogging the ice, and all I want to do is dance. <laughs> Thanks, let's go. Let's go. So, uh, Nancy starts going off, and all you gotta do, I mean, you can flame her all you want, but all you gotta do is make sure you slide around and make sure you're hitting the, the hockey players uh, as they come up. It's not too bad. You get a little bit of time when they come up, right up to her, but, uh,. Yeah, I generally say stick close. Don't move too far, because then you get nice control where you can just spin around. And uh, the reflections are your key. Oh. Just like all skating though, you can't jump. Hey, what did I say? No jumping. <laughs> no jumping. Uh, yeah. ModDB, I don't know. ModDB, ModDB? It's not ModDB, sorry. Have I been saying ModDB? Uh, Nexus Mods in particular, sorry. Not mod DB. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it's applicable to mod DB later as well. Look at that jump! Whoa. There we go. We did it. Woo! The roses don't get reflections. <laughs> Very we nice. Did it. That was my best performance ever. I guess one of the judges didn't like it though. He threw this egg at me instead of a rose. Why don't you have it? <laughs> okay, sure. Hey! That's a name. And he's a nerd. <laughs> Glasses equals nerds. I love you, Mark Cerny. You've done good work. Good on you, my man. He produced Knack. It's a yeah, pretty chill level. I got to say that twice. Let us leave. Uh, but yeah, no, Nexus Mods has, uh, quite a number of times now, it's happened a few times, it's taken down a mod, uh, mm, some people might, might say for some, uh, some, some hidden agenda, uh, cause you can connect it all, uh, several of these mods to some agenda, I don't know, maybe it, it's partially, you only hear about the ones that are controversial, We'll see. This one, I feel like it really shouldn't be controversial. It's just someone wants to skip the skip the uh, the disclaimer. But you know what you can do? Launch your game with the parameter dash no legal. Or hyphen no legal. It will not only skip that, but also skip the, the legal document, which also you probably don't care about. Uh, but yeah. Also, this level has the best dialogue. Kill this guy, and uh... That gator was mean. I thought I was a gunner. Thanks for saving me. You're welcome. But uh, I, I love, I love the gimmick. 
fun fact, I used the spooky swamp as my background image during Halloween. This level, I love. It's great. And the music's a vibe too. Where did this guy go? What is it? He's about to hit you with a lantern. Oh my gosh, jeez. But, but yeah, I don't, oh my gosh, just hit him with the slingshot. See these uh, fish tanked up live signs? You want to make sure you flame them. Uh, trust me. Also, these guys are a bit painful. Like, look at what is going on there. But uh, you, you'll deal with them. Thanks to the subdued brightness, somehow this level feels different. How is the... Yeah, how is the brightness? Because I was going to say, like... It probably is a little brighter just because... I don't know, actually. The emulator seems to get roughly the right brightness. But it's it's so chill. It's, it's, it's so, like... Just... You know, fun purples and the dullest greens known to man. Or the dullest purples and the brightest greens. I don't know, my brain's currently being a bit tricked. It's far less bright. Yeah, yeah, the snowy level is very, very bright. Everything's just like hard white in that level. I think that's actually like a visual strength of all these Spyro games is how very distinct their color palettes are. Um, so much so that they carry that over into all the Ratchet and Clanks, I'm very certain. That feels about right. Uh, remember, it's all piranha water, so you're not actually swimming in the spooky swamp. And we've got wonderful chest keys. Uh, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. If you got a problem with the whole, you know, Tomb Raider 1, 2, 3 launches and it tells you to not, you know, not think that this is reality, even though that's really obvious. Um, yeah, no, just, just launch the game with no leader. It's fine. Do we need a mod for that? Probably not, if the game sort of already does it. Um, but I still think in principle is like, you know, all kinds of mods should sort of be out there. If you want to do whatever, if you want to, you know, replace textures with a certain other thing, you know, feel free. I don't see a ton of value in like texture mods just because I usually find playing the games very authentic or uh, for the most part is generally how I play games. Um, you, yeah, not even like HD textures, I kind of just play it raw. This is just an egg chilling here. Um, when it comes to gameplay mods, those are the kinds of mods I play a lot. No nude mod for Lara for you? Oh, I, 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 I was gonna say, I have an imagination. I can just close my eyes, rotate 3D objects in space. Um, is that actually, it probably is. And it probably has always been. Um, probably, <laughs> But, uh, but, uh, when you can close your eyes, you can't play. Oh, but you see, you see, oh, I was gonna say, like, when I play, uh, as a Guitar Hero, sometimes I can close my eyes, and then I can imagine the, the crowd in their underwear. There you go. That's, that's how to make it more wholesome or not wholesome. Also, hi there, money bags again. This door is jammed shut. Only the power of gems can hope to move it. Very, very nice. Also, <laughs> I hope you can tell what's going on here. Dad Gummit Dragon, just cough up those stinking gems, and I can go home. Very nice. This door is... You've made a wise choice. It will mean more eggs for you and more gems for me. Best of all, Spyro, I can stop speaking haiku. What a sweet relief. Nice, very, very nice. I love, and I love that they keep that up the whole level. Even if there's probably not a ton of dialogue in all these levels, it's still good fun. I love it. Fun fact, by the way, I haven't spoken, or maybe I have, actually. Uh, the um, particularly the European version of this game uh, is one of the uh, well, is very notorious because uh, a lot of European versions have a thing called EDC. They have some kind of uh, copy protection. Um, uh, going on with them. So if the game itself detects that uh, you've done goofed, you're playing the game in some modded or uh, I guess copied protection, you are brave, dragon. it'll, f Much it'll braver flag the game. Here, take this darn egg. There you go. Uh, it'll flag the game, or at least in memory. It's not like your copy is compromised, but I guess every time you run it you'll probably experience the thing. Um, and uh, weird things will start happening. 
Uh, I gave a playthrough of the game around this point, and very, very unfortunately at this point, also a uh, score point for Flame and all those signs. Uh, very unfortunately at this point, uh, the game decided to change language on me. So the entire idea of them speaking haiku was lost on me. When all lamps are I think it was still in haiku, There is a secret in here that I will show you. That I will show you. Well, we gotta make sure we light all the lamps. Good thing there's a... I guess this is how you go around your loop. Another loop level. All good. Uh, but these lamps are a bit in high ledges and you kind of need to pay a little bit of attention to spot them. It's not too bad though. And there's a key somewhere that we haven't yet picked up, but I think it's just kind of chilling over there. Oh, there's another egg over there. Oh my gosh. There's a key. Let's get the key first, shall we? Uh... Well, I guess the key caused me to commit. Oh! <laughs> the key caused me to commit to the jump. Alas. Uh, but yeah. Uh... I also mentioned the... But, uh, yeah, the Tomb Raider Remastered uses AI to upscale its textures. Let's talk about our lives becoming absolute nightmares in the next few months. Introducing Sora AI, the brand new uh, text-to-video generation model uh, from OpenAI that may be releasing soon. But they showed a page about how cool their model is, and they definitely touted... Uh, that the examples that they were showing were completely unmodified, just outputs of uh, the Sora AI. Uh, Sora spelled exactly like Kingdom Hearts Sora, by the way. Um, uh, how good is the model? It's shockingly good on a technology level. It is not, uh, like, 100... How would I even say it? It's not, not even 100%, as in, it's still noticeable when things go wrong because stuff will still go wrong but video text to video generation like text to image generation has been you know a little bit shocking at first and then just immediately just goes oh look it's actually like very very competent remember when like this time two years ago dali mini was a thing and dali mini is uh i you know i type in the text and the image is like eh, it looks sort of like what i'd imagine it to be if i close my eyes like if I saw Elmo is on fire. Yeah, no, yeah, that kind of looks about right. Yeah. Stable Diffusion rolls out and suddenly Elmo on fire with enough training and enough sampling actually looks like Elmo on fire. It's like I might be able to spot some weird imperfections. Uh, there's a lot of times when an object covers the scene, like covers part of the scene and something that travels behind them just the consistency is gone. It's like a straight line behind them. It's just not going to be straight if an object blocks it. Uh, but it's like, yeah, you know, it doesn't look like a smear. It looks like an actual thing. You could probably the pass it off as lit. stock now, imagery. The secret of what's in this house. Okay. A creepy wizard lives inside but hits the light. He has awoken. Ooh. He swore to destroy whoever lights the tea lamps. Better you than me. Oh, thanks, bro. Avoid the gators. That's right, we got another boss fight. There he is, the sleepy Rhinoch. What does he do? He throws bombs at you. You charge bomb back at him. It hurts him. Keep doing that a few times. He's probably got other attacks, like this. Which makes these guys. They might be painful if you let them hit you too many times. Or if you can't aim the bombs. I'm pretty alright, I think. Also, uh... Pretty sure you can just charge them, so it's not that bad as well. But it does throw you off position. It's not too bad, though. Uh, so yeah, so this image generation, it looks very, very good. I will tell you only in words, and you're gonna have to, like, take my word for it right now. Eh. Dang it. Um, you're gonna have to take my word for it, uh, it, cause it is, uh, pretty cool, I'd say. And given that the prompts themselves aren't, like, ah, dang it. Given that the prompts themselves aren't, like, too, sometimes are a bit descriptive, but it's also, like, it's video. I sort of expect it to be very, very difficult to put in words, or, or to describe exactly what you want in words. 
Um, who knows how many attempts it took them to get very good videos as well. Like, they might have gotten a lot of very, very bad results before they got one that just worked. They're like, cool. Um, the model still has, uh, if you, if you look at the examples as well, the model definitely has a problem with, uh, things temporarily being correct or spatially being correct. Uh, temporarily being, uh, there's an example video of a cat, a person sleeping in bed, uh, with the, the bed sheets over them, and they're like, you know, like, oh, I'm gonna go back to bed, like that kind of mindset. And, uh, there's a ginger cat on the, uh, on the bed, and it puts its paw on the person, and then it puts its paw on the person, again. But it's also still standing up, so, uh, an extra leg just kind of pops out of nowhere. Also, the person's arm turns into a pillow, just casually. Um, it's a bit of a complex moment. I completely get why the model sort of does that, but, you know, it takes a bit before you look at this video and then you go, oh, AI, as opposed to immediately it just looks like a smear. Or it looks like, you remember the, the Will Smith eating spaghetti, like, memes? Um, a lot of people have been doing, like, other kinds of video AI memes, um, as well, uh, where it's like, yeah, no, it's, it's clearly, like, fake, or it's just, <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay, you're moving the mouth. Uh, I helped a friend, uh, cats it two small kittens this weekend, they were very small and clumsy. I love kittens. I am more a dog person, but I don't hate kittens. Kittens are adorable. Very, very cute. They're just like fluff balls, clumsy fluff balls. For them, their own legs were tall, uh, oh, sorry, entail could give them the effect of where this leg come from. Oh, yeah, yeah, as well. Babies are like that as well, they don't understand walking. They see people do it, and then, like, they just try whenever, and it somehow works, and they're very, very confused. Because their legs, you know, they're born and they never push their legs on anything. It's just like, oh my gosh, jeez. Uh, but yeah. Um, also, the, the cat in the video was cute. So, uh... This swamp smells so sweet. The springtime trees are fragrant. I'm off to kick butt. Nice. Also, Sheila's back. Uh, this is probably the most annoying part about the entire game. This one layer. One, we got a lot of these rocks that you gotta break. Uh, but also, just in general, the, the whole area. Well, this, this challenge is kind of annoying because it reminds me of another purplish area from Spyro 2. We have the bombs here. We must destroy the egg cage. But we just go boom. Oops, ah, oh, I pressed X, I press X. Hold on, I'm gonna say no so I can hear that again. We have the bombs here. We must destroy the egg cage, but we just go boom. Kangaroo can help. You can clear the pass for us. Will Sheila help us? I will help you. Yes, it's bombing time. Here I come, my little eggs, to free you at last. Here we go. So what do you do? Well, he's gonna sort of follow the path. Maybe. Uh, you just gotta break these, uh, rocks. It's not too bad. But then, you can see, oh, he's kind of straying from the path a little bit. And you gotta really just, like, spot ahead of time whether he's about to go over these things. You only need one ground pound, it's not too bad. But you never quite know what he's going over. Kind of have to be a bit careful. And you'll probably be able to hear one come back up in a bit. Uh... But yeah. Uh, the Sora AI is... Ah, oh, come on, I was right on it. And then he's very dead. And his glasses blink. Ow! I went boom again. Big rocks can be kicked, they say. Mushrooms must be stomped. Yes. Yeah, it's this. Is, this is a trouble with the trolley moment, isn't it? Where it's just like, at least they take the same path every time. But you also can't go too far ahead because the objects will. Well, I don't know if the rocks respawn, but the mushrooms come back up. So if I hit this about now, it's like, oh, it might come back up. It's not too bad, but you sort of have to just do the pattern a couple of times, and then you'll truly realize where he goes. Um, but yeah, the, the Sora model, very, very, um, cool looking. I'm curious how much it will cost for the average person, but you know what? I, like, the, the business that should be very, very worried about this is Shutterstock, because I can totally imagine people, you know, small-time content creators, uh, or just news 
We'll say news. Uh, also, oh! Oh, it's the same one twice! It's the same one twice! Um, yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff where it's like your visuals, you know, your visuals, yeah, I know, news. Uh, <laughs> but like, uh, like, you know, things with B-roll footage, basically, where the AI content, or rather, you know, the, the footage is not really the main content, but it's just there to supplement whatever you're saying or talking about, um, you know, just like people who do, like, video game footage, but they talk about, like, you know, real topics and stuff. People do that all the time, I guess. It's, what is it, like, subway surfers? We've already had this, like, for years. Oh, this material only makes sense if you're seeing, like, something tangentially related. If you're seeing a person just go to hackertyper.com and they're just typing stuff. You need to see that in order to know that it's a hacker in the story, you know? That's a, that's a good bit of height. Okay. Gosh. I don't know. Oh, oh! There we go. We're good. We're good. Rock. So you can see the double mushroom there. You know what you're in for. And there he goes. He gets to the end. Yeet! <laughs> Very nice. Peggy 18. <laughs> Very nice. One egg cage remains. Will you now help my brother to freeze the last egg? Freeze the last egg. A uh, real hacker always wears a mask and a trench coat while sitting in front of a PC. Yes, exactly. Sometimes he's in the dark. Usually he's in the dark. I the egg cage. Poor, poor captive eggs. And they're always writing Linux yes, kernel code. It's bombing time. Here I come, they write structs right from the last. beginning. Like just every character. Alright, new, new, new me, new path. He goes past the first bit a bit quickly. I think. Oh, is he gonna go through this? Oh, no, no, we're good. I think he, uh, he might go through... Oh. Okay, he goes to the rock. Watch out! Ooh. Okay, so he hasn't hit a mushroom yet. <laughs> this one is so troll and error. It's so many attempts, I tell you. Alright, we're just going for the rocks. Go for the rocks. Uh, but yeah, legit, Shutterstock is probably gonna be like, mm -hmm, which is also like, eh, didn't, like, isn't the model basically like using Shutterstock data? Okay, that's good. He's probably gonna go for the rock and then he's gonna take a lap around here, I think. Yep. Cool. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna go here or he's gonna walk right past. He's gonna walk right past. Go for it. Ah, oh, come on, come on. But yeah, now, as a viewer, please swap the, the visual artifacts and don't be, uh, you know, don't don't fall prey to people passing off AI stuff as real. Because again, you know, it's a, that is going to be a bit of a concern. Hypothetically, this AI stuff's getting good. So you gotta, you gotta watch out that, uh, you're not getting fooled for it. Oh, dang, it goes for the short one. Yeah, whoops. That's the kind of annoying part as well, is that it's all, uh... It's different, different paths for the first guy and the second guy, so some of them... Well, some of these mushrooms don't even get used at all, like, I'm pretty sure the super tall one... I don't recall, oh, maybe it comes up, we'll see. Oh, I saw that. Oh yeah, on a technology level? Nah, it's cool. On a moral level? We'll see. I've probably spoken a ton about just like regular old AI stuff. It comes up a fair bit at my work. So we keep thinking about it. Okay, I'm gonna try to smush the tall one see if that's the one. Actually, we'll just do both. Why not? Oh, he goes for the short one anyways! My th my hunch was right. Yeet! Very nice. Michel! Just mushroom noises in the back. There you go. The eggs are all free. Two dragons are born today. Sheila's my hero! Nice. So hopefully all these gems are just chilling around here, which they probably should be. 
I'm spending so many gems, I don't know how many, how many I'm meant to have. Uh, just like uh, pretty much every other Sheila section, they're going to hide some very, very awkward secrets as well. You could probably spot them from a distance. We've got this room over here, and you can you can be like, ah, 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 boing. Just chilling up here. Bunch of loose gems. And no egg, so this one would actually like throw off a lot of new players, probably. This is like a lot of gems now I think about it. Because we got this section over here as well. Hiding all the good stuff as well. What else have I got on my list of notes? Um, ah! Also on the technology front, and uh, this one I think is very, 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 very cool. Uh, is a tool called Zluda. Z-L-U-D-A. Uh, what it is, is it's effectively a wrapper around CUDA that works on AMD cards. So AMD cards can just run, mm, for the most part, a lot of CUDA programs. Not exactly all the features, but a lot of the, the big ones allowing you to run certain things um, under a CUDA uh, branch or something like that um, on an AMD card, which is very nice. Now, theoretically, it's cool. In practice, it's weird how it's sometimes, actually a lot of the time, better. There is something very odd going on if th these are getting better than the original, like, ROCKM or OpenCL variants. Um, and also, shockingly better that these cards sometimes are just like, like the 6800 XT. It's not even the newest architecture, it's not even the best card of that architecture. But sometimes it's like, it does so shockingly well. I actually think it might breathe some new life into some of these older cards as well. So, AMD holdouts, rocking RDNA 2, good on you. You probably got, you know, a lovely treasure trove of functionality just chilling there. Give it a check out. I think, I'm not too sure if you have to cross compile programs to work with uh, Sluda, and I don't quite know all the, all the methods of uh, what you need to do with it, because also, yeah, I love to just kick that wall. That one wall. I'm missing 10 gems, aren't I? From somewhere. Yep, okay, there's 10 somewhere. Well, let's keep giving it a look. Let's keep a peruse. These rocks keep coming back, man, I tell ya. But, I'm not too sure I'm leaving 10 in this section. Oh, wait. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. It was right there. The whole time. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's very cool. And I love seeing, like, I, you know, even if an NVIDIA might go like, okay, I'm going to completely change CUDA so that uh, it breaks this Luda thing. It's like, well, you know, the, the effort and the, the influence is there. And if anything, hey, you know, like... Could our computing language be uh, a more commonly adopted standard? It doesn't even need to be participated on by AMD, although uh, you can tell uh, if, if it's not, it might be a bit ripe for for uh, abuse over time. Maybe. We'll see. Um, oh, I love this long glide as well because the ground isn't quite there. Uh, so before we go into the next level, just remember, the moment I exit that level, it's going to prompt me to fight the boss. So we're going to go straight for the speedway. The country speedway, the whole country, is right here. The entire thing. It's not a part that's not country. Uh, it's the huge. Oh my gosh. Okay. I, I do, I do love him, but I, I need the subtitles. Cough, cough, enter the dragonfly. Oh, again, he's giving it away. He's going, start with the rings, get the tractors, get the cows, and save the planes for last. We'll see how easy this is again. Like, look, all, all the rings are on screen at the same time. They're all just right there. The tractors are all chilling there. I don't know, man. I don't think they really made the... 
the, the flight stages, the speedways, particularly that tricky. I'm gonna be perfectly lined up for the cows, aren't I, as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfectly lined up. Hey, that's okay. I'm wearing like berets or something? They're revolutionaries. We even got this so you can so you can speed up, catch these planes. You can probably just spin around and get them like that, but. Pigs in the plane. These poor planes are just chilling, by the way. And here is this like mean old dragon just going, yep. <laughs> you're all dead. You're all, you're all gone for it. There you go. Nice and easy. Four hundos flying out to space. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I love Zuda in, in concept and in practice. Like, I'm actually shocked that it is doing as well as it is. So, uh, yeah, no, give it a go. And yeah, more competition, more more stuff. Let's make these cards great and not lock them all down. Even if, you know, I completely get why NVIDIA isn't making AMD implementations of CUDA. I completely get that. But can they let people make their own implementations against CUDA? Hopefully. <laughs> To the biplane race. So you have to fly through all of the green checkpoint rings. There you go. It's the same rules as before. They didn't change anything. But the path is a bit more involved this time. We've also got uh, these uh, red stars, which will give you a, uh, a rocket. And the rocket can spit forward and kind of hit the guy in front of you, which is nice. But sort of unnecessary, unless it's the guy in first place, because... What's the point in slowing down anyone who's not first place? Like, I might as well do it, but like, what is slowing this guy down actually do? Uh, that star is just not in the convenient spot. It's a little bit of a funky, funky fly. Also, uh, yeah, make sure you get that one. Don't have to get all the rings, but yeah, it's a lot more involved. So I definitely say a bit more interesting than the uh, than the first race. And yeah, it's a bit of a chase, ain't it? Well, that one's always a cheeky one, but uh, there's first place over there. We're not too far off. Uh. What else do I have in uh, in my notes? I got a lot of topics, I'll tell ya. Uh, we got Xbox exclusivity. They got the X in the name, uh, which I always find fun. Uh, but there were a lot of rumors, and a lot of people should really like stop jumping on the rumor mill when it seems kind of, uh, I don't know, it's a bit outlandish to say like, oh, Microsoft are gonna ditch the Xbox as a console. It's like, it might happen. This, this might be the sounds of a secret console fanboy, I guess. I don't know. I, the only Xbox I have is the original. Um, but uh, but I feel like it would take a lot of effort and a lot of abysmal set. Oh, I keep missing that one because it's so tight of a turn. Um, it would take so many abysmal sales in order to like push the Xbox, I feel, out of being a console. Um, Microsoft just to be a publisher, or bonus points, Microsoft just bails. But like right after they bought Bethesda, or Zenimax, I don't know. Also right after they bought Activision Blizzard, again, I don't know. Um, so what is the actual news? Uh, well, the actual news is that Microsoft is going to take four games that they've probably established already. Uh, a lot of people rumor Sea of Thieves probably be one. Uh, I got a hunch, maybe? Halo? Maybe? Maybe Halo Infinite? We'll see. Um, and two other ones. Four games total. Uh, not Starfield. That's not one of them, apparently. And not the new Indiana Jones game. Uh, but they just said, well, there will be four games uh, coming to other consoles. Uh, it will probably be the PS5 and maybe the Switch. We'll see. Halo Infinite on the Switch would be very, very funny. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
Uh, remember, we've got to get that third egg. Some random object somewhere is hiding Hunter. Can you tell which random object? Oh no, they will kill the Xbox. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They'll kill the Xbox by giving anyone any other game, like... Spyro, PC players just be like, hmm. Believe this, but there are sheep saucers and space cows all over this place. We gotta stop them before they abduct anybody. Oh my gosh, Hunter, you've been reading too much stuff on the internet. I'm gonna strap on my jetpack and blast some space cows. This is not a euphemism for anything. Look out, cows! Here I come! Oh my gosh. I love how it's different. You just got a cursor, you go around, and you point at things. It's kind of like the, the one in, um, Fire 2, actually. Fortunately, uh, you don't move as fast, and, uh... Well, other than other than its inverted controls, I tell you it was a deal with Sony for some. Oh my god! That some PlayStation exclusives go to PC and or Xbox in return for some games coming to PlayStation. If it is, if that actually does happen, there's like, yeah, there's actually um, Sony published games going to PlayStation or going to um, Xbox. That'd be a very curious thing. Or do they not want the profits? Yeah, like to me, to me, and I, I completely get Microsoft's move to do it for older games because it's like, okay, like you wanted to push your hardware. Not a lot of people are going to buy an Xbox just to play the exclusives at this point. Like, not uh, not in general, but more like, uh, you know, these older games. You don't drive the hardware from really a lot of these older games anymore. A lot of the people who wanted it sort of just get it right away. Uh, Nintendo are generally a lot more impervious to that. They will hold out for as long as they want because uh, selling games on the Wii U and not having Switch ports was still a more worthwhile thing for some things like Mario Kart 8. People would still buy a Wii for Mario Kart 8 for like a whole year. We got the last one just before he abducted this egg. Wow. <laughs> just before. Roberto. They really like their bubbles, don't they? Well, that's another Speedway level. Oh, the layout's fun, that's nice. Just kicking back, will you? Nah. You don't get to kick back. Uh... But yeah, I... Uh, like, I mean, Sony and, and Microsoft have viewed the same thing when it comes to PC, which is a lot of people on PC are not going to buy the console. They have a good computer. And I... Like, from a player's perspective, games being on more platforms, and generally being optimized for all platforms, you don't want... You don't want games to just be trash on all platforms. Um... Bamboo Terrace, uh, is a better thing. Kickback and real. Aren't kickbacks like the fun thing people do at Country Borders? Kickbacks, uh, what I get for, uh... uh it's, um, what's the thing? It's when you're, like, a pinball machine and it, like, pushes back on you. It's kickback, eh? I was also thinking, isn't it like a kickback? Like a, like a tax... ...statement or something? Rhinox have been harassing us all day. The workers haven't been able to harvest the bamboo needed for the whirligig to take you to Evening Lake. We've tried asking them to leave, but there's no reasoning with them. There's no reasoning. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll have a word with them. I'd probably say this and one other level. Also, Ida. Do you mind? I'm trying to avoid being trampled by a water buffalo. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, I probably say if you want to want to do your your Chinese New Year theme, uh, this level and uh, there's a level in the next world probably are the closest theme wise. But it's really just these two. Please, would you be so kind as to step aside? Oh, okay, okay. Pretty sure we had a level in Spyro 2 that's kind of like this. The, fro the ice level, but I couldn't remember its name, and I still can't remember its name. Dang it. The music's a vibe, though, I tell ya. I wish Spyro, uh, Enter the Dragonfly didn't just look at us and went, Yes, this is the theme of the game. It's like, no. I wonder if they made these pretty late when they realized, Hey, it's the Year of the Dragon. Perhaps? I feel like maybe one of these they might have had for a while, but... Mm, yeah, having both. Yeah, sure. I can't think of really too many other, any other levels really that play into the theme though. There was nothing last stream, right? Just 
running. Pretty much beat the enemies and uh, you'll trigger the pandas to uh, do what you want them to do. It is a pretty clever marketing point to, <laughs> to pick the gear of the dragon though. The best part as well is that like, you know, I don't think anyone would have questioned the game too much, too much, if you had called it like Spyro the Dragon 2000 or something. Um, but managing to get Year of the Dragon in there is like, oh. That's cheeky, that's clever, I like it. Also brace yourself, the funny number of eggs is coming up. RPG Maker 2000, yeah. What's another one? Um, music. And then it had a sequel, Music 2000. And it came out in the year, uh, 1999, of course. Madison. But yeah, I, like, is, is the Xbox thing good? Uh, it's good for us players, gamers, that kind of stuff. Is it good for Microsoft, maybe? We'll see. But, uh, I could definitely say, even though I don't think Xbox is dying as a brand, it's certainly the weakest of the three right now, and we are in a very, very big identity crisis where the consoles are flourishing purely because the PCs are kind of expensive. Also, another wall with four lives. Four whole lives. That's not even a skill point in this level, but that's just chilling there. There you go. I was like, you're gonna get that gem? Uh, but yeah, I don't have too much to say about the Xbox exclusivity, other than, uh, Phil Spencer, you're still on my Steam friends list, back when you showed off, uh, like, the very, very old, like, you know, Microsoft published games coming to Steam. Cause, uh, and you, you could tell it was you, cause you were playing Aria in the Blind Forest, like, on Steam, ages before it was actually, like, out. Um... And, uh, yeah, a bunch of bunch of lucky people managed to friend him at that time. He accepted them, and he has not unfriended us. But he probably probably uses a different Steam account. I could probably get if it's a work one, but it's like, hey, you know. I'd love if it's like, hey, I'm Phil Spencer. I'm going to do an interview with exclusively the people who managed to friend me that one time. That'd be cool. I'd love to have a chat. Also, we're at the end of this level already. We would be honored if you would accept this as a token of our appreciation. Wow. I'm not going to make a comment about how the uh, the Chinese themed oh, level the has uh, granted me a Why live animal as a sooner. token. I shall open it right away. That's a fun stereotype. I should have put a disclaimer warning, shouldn't I? Disclaimer, this stream, this stream is very tone deaf. Something something 69 eggs. This is the worst time to do 69 eggs. Uh, this requires a new character that we don't have. To all explorers, there is no yeti here. And, and there never was. He was just a myth, as far as you know. The sorceress. Very nice. Uh, we have brought back... The most obnoxious mechanic from Spyro 2. The pot that keeps going backwards in the level. And by backwards I mean uh, over there. It was, it was not as backwards as I thought. We'll try our best in this level. We don't need to get all the gems first go. There's no war in bossing say Exactly. Exactly. We should have just used the escape passage. Uh, we'll come back to this level though. Because i got to do uh, the, the level. Ah. Oh. This egg thief is always a tricky one because we'll just do the lap. So if he gets to the oh, the wrong lap, that's not the right direction, bro. Ah, uh, come back. Uh, I got one last topic, and that is uh, Tekken 8 has casually gone okay. People like the game. The reviews are all good. People are enjoying it. What do we do weeks after launch? We had a microtransaction store. That's right, Tekken 8 is, uh... I mean, you know, the game might still be fine, and honestly, the microtransaction store might still be... Hey, you know, it's just more. Like, as in the skins. That's it. Does it sting that you can't just buy things like regular human beings? Yes. 
It does. I'm not saying microtransaction stores are good, but I, in the grand scheme of like, did they screw up the game? We'll see, because I know some fighting game person is gonna, you know, go, oh, the colors are off, which means that my, you know, detection of things doesn't work. And I kind of get that for some games. I think some people had a problem with a Call of Duty when uh, certain skins were colored the right way. Uh, we do have one bonus area we can go into right now, though, which is uh, across the bridge. That's kind of weird. It's all the way back over here. It's like, okay. Yeah, we can head up this bridge into this lovely different portal. Uh, it's also kind of curious because they have to put a Please message on the Sparkle. ESRB rating about whether it's got microtransactions. So, fields, uh, it's there for done. digital. Can you save the panda workers? Can you save the... I, I, I guess. Please hop aboard. Make sure to toast the Rhinox, but not my friends. We've got a lovely shooting gallery section, that's right. Also, it immediately goes first person for you. You gotta make sure you hit the Rhinox. And for some reason all the pandas go, Ah yes, I'm gonna climb up this ladder right now. What do I say? Shoots. What's the one joke? Pandas are violent, they eat, shoot, and leave. Shoots and leaves. Something like that. So, we're nearly done the lap. You know what they do? They put a bridge out and they airdrop two dudes. These guys get kind of annoying when they land, but they slow down a ton right before. Pokemon Snap is also a rail shooter. Yes, this is just a Pokemon Snap mode, ain't it? Yes. Am I technically throwing apples at them? Kind of hot apples. It's not that bad, but you do kind of get a, you know, you got to get a few Please before, this shiny egg. <laughs> before it's over. Good luck. Bring you good luck. Thank you, my man. Thank you. Rusty. I know I am. I know. And then the game is just like, nah, you're, you're good. You're done. Uh, so yeah, we can't uh, quite get the uh, remaining egg or how many gems? That's a lot of gems that are probably just in that bonus section. Oh, jeez. But we'll come back to this level uh, at the end of the stream. Uh, but you know the drill. After immediately one stream, we do the boss fight, we go into the next world, unlock the character, and come back. Just for this one goodie. And off we go. Off we go. Ah, uh, yeah. I I do kind of hate the, the idea of games sneakily adding these uh, these microtransactions or that other kind of stuff. Um, Let's head on over to the Whirly Gig. You feel a lot taller than you used to be? I don't know. And here we go, to the Whirly Gig, where we shall head to Evening Lake and totally not be interrupted by any boss fight. It does suck, and uh, again, I, I keep, I keep kind of ripping on game industry doing stupid stuff just for monies. Idiotic, worthless fool! I ask you to carry out one simple task, and you fail me. True, yeah. Should have known better than to rely on a child. A child. Don't worry about it. I'll deal with them now. Can't be worth all this trouble. Without the dragons, the magic in this world will wither away. Without magic, I'll die. And so will your ever so slim chance of becoming a sorceress. Now, at least that fixed the pop filter on this game. Dispatches her enemies. They got rid of his teeth. I got rid of everyone's teeth, really. Microtransactions appear to most of the time. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Oh! Big lad. She got a right first go. And he's got a hammer to boot as well. We gotta save because I watched that cutscene. We gotta make sure we save. Another circular arena. My tactical instincts told me the sorceress would attack you here, so I flew in to help out. It seems my rocket launchers don't affect this creature, but I can assist you by dropping ammunition. Now get in there and fight the good fight. Fight the good fight. So here we go. We got a guy. He's uh. Oh, well, he tries to chase you. 
and you can charge things into oh Ooh. Kind of reminds me a lot of, about the gulp fight, doesn't it? How about I be a bit more patient? Uh-oh. Where's the crystal popcorn? Um, but yeah, no, I totally agree. Oh, there it is. Uh, I to- oh. Yeah, one magical hit as well, which is nice. Very neat. More cracks. This is a fun fighter. I like it. Because you're not waiting for the boss anywhere near as aggressively as perhaps other games would. And they change things up. I want to get the blue. I want to get the blue. I just spit it at him. Whoa. Hey. Hey. Get him. Get him. Nah. Missed. Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> uh, but yeah. No. You are right, microtransactions are generally greed. I don't, like, I don't hate the people who tried the microtransactions as an alternative payment format. So it's like you'd make the game and then you'd release it for a very cheap price or like an entry price and you'd use the microtransactions to be the way that you distribute more content. I don't, yeah, I... I do agree that there's a lot of free-to-play games that are just predatory. They do just go like, hi, yes, you know, you've played the game a bit, now join all your friends who definitely paid money, and now it's like, oh, like, can't we just, you know, release a game? Oh my gosh. Can't we just release a game, just for a set price and just call it, you know? Um, I, I really hate as well that like subscription models and all this kind of stuff as well like it really muddies it up because it's like there's a bunch of games where it's like uh, like not f free to play quadruple A <laughs> yeah quadruple A games and yeah, all that stuff we died again died a few times on stream maybe the game will go easy on me and maybe it will because note how uh, the game actually does this by the way there's actually a skill um, metric underlying uh where uh, you'll notice that the boss will sometimes just attack fewer times now that i've died a couple of times um this is a this is a dynamic thing that um the crash bandicoot games do quite a bit as well um and yeah it's just like just silently judge the player in the background and make the game a little silently harder or easier if they're li if they're winning or losing a bunch. It is not based on the number of lives I have. So even oh my gosh. So even though I've got 20 lives left, the game's gonna go. Well, you died twice. Oh. All right, come on, come on, come on. We could do one hit. We could do one hit. Come on, 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 It's just pain. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not having, <laughs> I'm not having a skilled time. I was doing all right before and now it just looks very inexperienced because I am kind of on this one. Did I even say he, he doesn't seem that bad? Because, uh, yeah, I know, I, I completely regret saying that. Oh my gosh, excuse me. Okay, 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 okay. Hey. There we go. Oh. Hey, no, I got Okay. Um, but yeah, like, it's, it's, it's shocking that, like, we keep having to go in a bit of a, bit of a loop of a, you know, game publishers sort of justifying the microtransactions, and it's like, yeah, in most cases it is predatory, because ultimately, it, you know, imagine like a, like a movie, you gotta pay, like, you know, like, just as the, well, I guess you pay as the movie goes along and you end up getting more money. Even though you make the same game. You make, like, the content might be the same. Or alternatively, you put more effort into stuff that actually is meaningless. I am not doing a good job in dodging these, I tell ya. I'm like two hits away from winning. And then I'm like, nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna choke. I'm gonna goof it up. But have you noticed that this boss fight and the previous one are not dropping extra health as well? Is that, is that a thing to make these boss fights, like, harder? Because I know Spyro 1, they were a bit of a joke. 
And then this game, it's like, or it the second game, it was like, yeah, but they did drop health all the time. And then watch me have like a very, very fairly easy time on the other bosses. Partially this is because I'm starting to get a bit ag aggressive. I'm going a bit fast. I'm also not dodging these very well. Like I really should be like sprinting around, I guess? Like, sometimes if I'm not sprinting, it's like, you can tell they're homing on me a little bit. So it's not just like dodging like a gulp shot. I don't know about that one, though. Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to piece in my head, why am I... <laughs> why, why am I taking the hits all the time? Oh my gosh, they're spawning chickens for me, finally. It, it, it is a skill issue, I'll tell you that. Also, I'm pretty sure the boss is just taking, like, less damage now. I'm pretty- I'm sorry, more damage, as in more damage per hit. I'm pretty sure the game just decided to go easy on me, just and I was like, Hey, oh, died five times. I get it, I get it. See, now I don't feel like I deserve that one. I'm ripping on your game. I didn't deserve that. I should have tried harder. And instead I just burnt five lives and the game was like, oh, okay, you can continue. We'll never know what this boss really feels like. We need a redemption round in the last stream, I'll tell you. I'll do a redemption round. Evening Lake has a jam. Absolute jam of a song. But you won't hear it. Listen to me, dragon. Spyro. This is serious now. The sorceress is planning a trap for you, and if she catches you... Believe me, you don't want to know what she's going to do. Look, I promise to take good care of the rest she's of the gonna eggs. She's going to make me see Madam Just Web in theaters. Just take Hunter and go back home before... Before... I can't say it! Just go! Just go! Alright, let's see how easy it is to make my way around to where the, uh, the creature of the week is. Is, and I'm pretty sure he's just showing up here. Not quite. And then I pick up the gem anyway. Uh, where would he be? Oh, wait, there's a, there's a hole in here. This is a very, very fun world, but, uh, we'll not, we'll not, uh, we'll not experience everything just yet, because we gotta unlock the animal, go back, and then do it all next week, I guess. Where are we going? Where's this guy chilling? in here, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> there is the no air ventilation in here. This will this will eventually all turn into carbon dioxide. Inox to capture this dim-witted furball, so you'd better believe he's not going to get out cheap. 1000. Where are you getting all this money, Spyro? <laughs> it's not just lying around on the ground, is it? Uh, is it? Ah, what do I care? It's mine now. It's mine. There we go. Another cutscene for us all to enjoy. Ah, the first rejuvenating breath of freedom. With the humility of a wounded sparrow, I genuflect to my noble deliverer. Uh... It was no big deal, dude. Yes. <clears throat> After all, it was I who let you out. Why, you brazenly avaricious, duplicitous, larcenous ursine! Now oh, hold on. Dead. Again. One more, perhaps? At least. Please do afford me the sublime honor of enjoying your visitation in the nearest future. Yeah, sure. I love Bentley. He's good fun. I love him. And we'll get to play as him in a hot moment. Once the game's saved and reloaded this level. 
Bentley's Outpost. That's right. It's technically another snow level. <laughs> technically. <laughs> and away we go to the Bentley land. Hi there. I will gladly help you on your quest, Spyro. But first I must attend to my young sibling. I'm afraid he may have gotten himself into trouble during my absence. Oh my gosh. Darn young siblings. So uh, Bentley is a bit of a weird character because he's uh, so slow that he has no way of moving faster. Hey bro, it'd be really cool if you smash that boulder. A swift smack should do the trick. And also you gotta hear these British accents all over the shop. Uh, he has this weird jump, it sort of works. He's got a massive club. He's got this uh, deflecto shield. Uh, that's kind of it. Nice and simple, you just mash stuff. And pick up tons of gems, because all these levels have 600 gems. And there's a lot of grunt noises in the music. Also watch out, you're gonna see these all the time. They did it once in Spyro 2, and they're just gonna use it everywhere. Can I? Oh, I was like, did you actually hit that from here? And the answer is definitely not. If you use your spin move to deflect the snowball into the gong, I bet we can make the roof cave in. Wow. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Wow. How convenient it landed on something. Die! <laughs> Brian! Oh my gosh, jeez. Yeah, family's good fun and a very, very curious change of pace. I love even keep in this as well. Very nice, very fun. It took me forever to train those seals to throw snowballs. Now they've gone and turned on me. Well, you know what you gotta do. You just gotta use the, the force. Bonk. It's pretty straightforward. Like, you don't have to time it that much. Just hit square at the right, you know, roughly before and you're all good. No, oh, no, another seal, and this one looks really mean. <laughs> it's the same as before, bro. It's baby weak sauce. Another gong! Great! I bet we could cause an avalanche with this one. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, there's softball on these at me. Hmm. It's a bit too literal, ain't it? What's I love? Just the guy on top. Break through here, we have lots and lots of- Oh my gosh, you touched me with the fire. Lots and lots of snowballs. Lots and lots of ledges to jump up. Dude, the transparency in the club is probably like... So much effort for the PS1 already, it's like, uh And yeah, one of these gems will always fall off. Which is a little disheartening, because now you gotta do the trek. But yeah, what exciting stuff do we have this week? Because I feel like I've talked about, uh, the AI thing, which some people probably, you know, don't really like, and, uh, Zulu was cool. But yeah, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of, like, Oh, okay, things in the news today, so what is there to be excited about? Well, I guess I'll continue playing uh, the Steel and understanding it more, which will be good fun. And uh, I, I hope whatever game ex uh, expeditions or whatever... Oh, there was a new Steve Hackett album. It was sort of, uh, sort of the same boat that Steve Hackett's always done, but uh, I like his stuff. A stinking Rhinoc has blocked the way with this box. It shouldn't be any problem there are for far you to too many stupid the way, people though. in the world. There, there are, yes. Um, also, yeah, you can push boxes. Why stop it leaving the door open? Just go for it. There's a skill point right there for doing it. Charlie. But yeah, no, there's, there's a lot of stupid people, and I, I do think that... We gotta be careful not to pretend that things that are, are AI are not AI. Um, 
And, and in particular, things that aren't real are real. It's like, don't, let's not, let's not confuse the two. Things will look more realistic, but I guess it's like, you know, cinema. I'm hoping it's like that, where it's like, you know, people thought the practical effects and stuff got way more serious. Way more, uh, real over time. And, uh... Like, what's the thing? It's like, people, when they first saw, like, uh, a movie, and it was just like a, like a silent film, and it was just like a train oncoming, and like, lots of people ran because they didn't understand in their brains, they just saw the train oncoming, and they were like, oh gosh, train. Hey, Brainiac, you're supposed to be smart. Why don't you try pushing those blocks around to bridge that gap? Wow, maybe I should. That's what I should probably go through there, shouldn't I? This just gems up the wazoo, though, I'll tell you that, though. Jeez. Um. Yeah. AI yeah, is always a, always a curious topic. I would have never imagined, like, the backlash to be as severe as it is. Um. I completely get why it is. And I think that some of it is overblown, but I also think, like, when there's a worry, there's definitely an underlying, like, you know, reason for it. I don't think people are you know, being afraid for nothing. There's certainly something to it. Um, whether it's truly realized does depend. But yeah, like, attributions are always a massive problem. And yeah, technology like this, where it's like, yeah, we could probably, like, really screw up with people if, like, you know, they're only seeing, like, AI-generated stuff on their Apple Vision Pros all the time. Like, I, I mentioned Apple Vision Pro, but really all VR probably in a similar boat. People are already goofed up from being raised with an iPad. Those kids are mess. They're saying things like phantom text and skibbity toilet all the time. I don't even hate skibbity toilet. It's just... This is strange, man. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Here's a little something for your rock collection. My rock collection? Eric. We're also strange at our time being- we are! I used to, like, quote, like, Newgrounds videos all the time when I was young, and, uh, that probably confused the heck out of my parents. I had very unrestricted access to the internet, and I feel like I eventually learned what's right and wrong, but when I was a kid, I probably was a bit of a nightmare. And, uh, I- I don't know, when I have kids, I'm- I'm- I'm probably gonna be in the same boat of just, uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm gonna keep an eye on them. I'm not gonna say they can't access the whole internet, although maybe social media might be a bit of a curious bubble. I dodged that one. Maybe that's how I became a normal, normal person. That sounds like a stretch. I'm probably in the minority because I don't use social media. So back to the midday gardens we go. Yeah, like, I think that that's gonna be a huge dichotomy of like, people, whether they seriously use social media or not. And, and I don't think it's, um, you know, like, permanently entrenched in your brain that, like, you're in social media mode, you'll never get out of it. Um, but I do think that, like, the people who really, really, like, stuck with meme channels on Discord, I feel like a lot, yeah, a lot of people don't traditionally use social media, would also use Discord. I, I use it like it's IRC. I send food, food pics to my friends. If they're your friends, it's very, very different to public social media. And I think one thing with Discord is that it is kind of just a chat. And a chat is very different to a timeline that is fed on likes and things like that. I think the moment you start adding likes and, you know, automated curation through feedback and that kind of stuff, and uh, particularly, you know, some people will turn it into a comparison, and some people will definitely turn it into a, a bit of a gamifying uh, to try to be the best on that. In yeah, public, I do sometimes show off fancy food or cute animals to see the memes I've found in service like my Guild Wars 2 game. I think, I think as long as it's like a controlled set of things that you're sharing, um, and you're not doing it for like the, the competition. Like I know in the past, and I, I know I say it's like, I haven't yet run, like, isn't your YouTube channel in its 16th year right now? Yes. Maybe 17th if we're counting 2007 when the channel was made. Maybe. 
Oh my gosh, I'm old. <laughs> but, uh... Ah, a fine day for a bit of a walk. Bit of a I walk. I was just heading to the top of my favourite hill. What a very quaint moment. And then... Hey, good old Bartholomew. I think I saw some Rhinox run up to the top of that hill with an egg. Spicy things, Lincoln bio. I mean, if it, well, depends what kind of spicy things. I recently saw a wonderful meme. Wonderful meme. I don't, the only thing with Bentley is that, uh, you know, for the most part, he doesn't really have, like, sections that are really that different. And I guess, in the same way as, you know, like, all these characters sort of don't differ too much, they've probably got the most regular gameplay out of, out of all of them. So regular that the music doesn't change. I do enjoy me a good, wonderful meme. Also, I like the oncoming volume. Just like, BAM! There's, uh, two OnlyFans bots saying... In bio, something in bio. I assume they're, like, um, Markov chain bots, but they're just looking for, like, keywords. People gotta be careful for that kind of stuff. Like, that, that's, that's been so to apply to having them just count and me in my accent. Nice, nice. Whoop. Ooh, pro hit. Very, very nice. I do enjoy me a good old Gimli meme. Seriously, there's a lot of gems just in the side area. Wow. So, of course, me showing off spicy things was a joke. Hey, that's all good. That's a wholesome meme. Gimli is very wholesome. It's a pretty straightforward section, but uh, it's good fun. Whoa! Oh, okay, we're good. We're good. <laughs> we can use this to get a bit of a heal. Last bit of the hill. Last bit we go. Oh! Gonna watch out for that TNT dino might. Is that all the gems in the level? Uh, is that all the gems in the level? I don't think it is. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> I didn't do the pot, did I? I sort of bailed on the pot. <laughs> yeah, I probably did bail on the pot. There's probably 35 gems just chilling there. Whoops. I think we can go back for the pot. You can tell how tiny these eggs are. Oh, which which side do I have to be on? Brubik? Now, this is called the Blendo Pro Strat. You want to look directly towards that, and then you want to just walk right off and realize you got to be a little careful because you can sort of be a little too far over. The spiciest thing I do is sending a friend of mine a picture of my feet. Uh, 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 why, why do we talk about feet? Why do we talk about feet? Feet? Oh, you weren't here for the Quake 2. Ah. Oh. There was, there was one stream where I was chatting about the, the Chucker Conroy stuff. And uh, the rule is, no feet. I'm not doing it. Not even like the- like, I legit- I've seen people where it's like, they get gaslit into it, they go like, ew, like, I'm not into it. And then they see enough of it, and they normalize it in their brain, and suddenly it's now normal. We stop at the source. I was I was like, this is me trying to be funny, but it's sort of the backhanded way of saying no, no feet, none of that. Um, <laughs> I think I said in that stream as well. I was like, I don't know, it's weird. Like if you're if you're into that, you know, like eh. <laughs> I'm not gonna think lesser of a person, but I'm not. I'm not <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm gonna sound so critical when I, when I say that, but I don't know. This, I, I got nothing positive to say about feet. That's a, I don't know. It's a very tricky thing because I always want to spin something and be like, oh, there's, you know, there's gotta be some like positive nature to it. It's like I don't know about this one. Okay, well, I I don't get it. I don't get it. 
I, I don't even know, like, the source. Because sometimes, like, you can trace the lineage of, like, weird things people are into. I, I'm usually not judgmental, but this is one of my exceptions, because I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I do understand really high level math. Uh, I, knowing some, like, okay, I, depends what we consider high level math. I did conics in high school, and I legit, like, I've never used them outside of high school. When people say, like, oh, you know, like, high school is, like, or, or like, yeah, actually, no, yeah, this, this thing's for, for... <laughs> Oh, I'll judge mathematicians for conics. That kind of stuff is whack, though. That is such a whack relationship that somehow works. I did. Here's a, here's a personal rip. I ripped on my sister for uh, taking a hot second when I was telling her about the Bathurst. And I, and I said, the race starts at 5.45 a.m. And it's a 12-hour race. What time does it end? And, and, <laughs> and she started counting. And I was so shocked, and I described this story to my mum. And she was like, oh, hold on. And she started counting, I was like, oh no. So obviously, uh, I'm going nuts. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. I always thought, I'm very neurotic about this. I, I used to struggle a ton as a kid. And I still sort of have that like bit of my brain where it's like, sometimes like my brain's like shortcut of the set. And it just goes immediately. It's like, oh, I know. Like, you know, when I say 5.45 a.m., what's in 12 hours? 5.45 p.m. That's what my brain works. I will convert in 24-hour time. We'll go p.m. plus 12. 17. Okay, cool. I'm, I I do my, my arithmetic very, very well. I'm great at that. Practice a ton. Uh, there are things that I really don't know. So you, you could definitely rip on me for something. But yeah, especially around math, it's like sometimes, like, I don't know. I go too fast. I completely don't get. I don't get like why it takes someone just a very normal amount of time. That's probably what it is in the end. Another Sparks level where uh, we got these real like hexagon heat kinds of guys. You gotta watch out for the hexagon heat kinds of guys. I don't know. Uh, like that's probably one of my like worst qualities, I guess, is that I'm very uh, impatient when it comes to uh, particularly maths. It's, just, it's mostly maths. So, uh, why are there radioactive bugs coming out of my flower pots? I don't know. But, uh, you gotta be careful, especially with, especially with these ones on angles. They're kind of iffy. And they give you that brief bit of invulnerability that you just, you're gonna waste by trying to run back. But yeah, in general, I don't know. I, I'm gonna say I try to not judge, uh, cause a lot of it, like, the feet thing I can judge in the sense of, like, well, you actively gotta be into it, I guess. But, like, I I do really draw the line that, like, I can't rip into people for things that, like, are very outside their control. It's kind of a, you know, a bit of a shame when it is outside their control, but it's also, like, oh, no, I completely get it. It's, you know, not someone's fault that, like, you know, things like, like, you know, like, I'm a very privileged guy. I, I have, like, tons of video games when I'm growing up, and I know that some people don't. Uh, I'm coming back for that, because you got to loot back. So it's all good. It's all good. These these radioactive guys. I tell ya. These levels get kind of interesting though. I tell you that. Like you're going on this bit of a key hunt. You're picking up all these like bits. And then yeah, you've got that. Uh, the big reason why I I missed this gem is because yeah, like this guy is currently under a shield. He's invulnerable. And I hold on. Which which door do I open? This one. This one. Oops. That was a, yeah, that was a deliberate, because there's so many shielded enemies, and I don't want to, like, hang around, deal around with them. They're kind of annoying, these guys, I'll tell ya, but it's not the worst, it's not the end of the world. Hit the switch, crash three sound, there you go, now I can finally destroy the flower pot, man. And again, yeah, 200 gems are just chilling. So funky, I love it. Uh, 
Alright, let's defeat more flower pot men. Uh, let's... Oh, I can pick it up. Alright, we got a key. I can I scooch fast? There you go. Was I going up? Can you actually see me, like, sort of move up vertically? <laughs> so, that's a bit of a curious spot, ain't it? Alright. Oh, I'm glad that... Just very slightly. Very, very slightly, but enough to make me go, hmm. Because there shouldn't really be any verticality going on here. And that means that there's gravity. I appreciate that, like, just get the right angles on these guys as well. Yeah, it probably makes sense with the 3D engine. I mean, the gems are doing it. You'll see me, like, break open the flower pot and the gem moves up slightly. Because, uh, if I do this quite right, you can see I'll go right under it. Yeah, like modern Donkey Kong. Uh, I'd say modern Donkey Kong is even better. I don't think there's... Oh. Maybe there are parts of modern Donkey Kong that do properly, like... 3D. And, and to be honest, like, all games nowadays are just 3D. It's so much easier to deal in 3D for more flexible things. Uh, you can still use integer map on quite a few parts. Also, I love how the Switch is right here. I've got hand it. 3D games are super good at doing um, uh, vector-based art as well. So things like Rayman just, like, scale and look amazing at whatever resolution you throw them. Time for a boss! He be spinning! Whoa. Whoa. Oh my gosh, my ears! <laughs> Alright, let's start getting this guy a bit more normal, shall we? Yeah. Man, if only I had the, the spray and pray power up. He's gonna take his time, isn't he? Because uh, he spins and then he spits out a ton of guys at you. Imagine like spitting out spiders out of your mouth. That should really have been Madam Web's super ability. Has anyone actually seen that movie as well? I hear it's like Morbius has a meme and Madam Web is just like in this weird spot where, like, um, and, oh my gosh, there's gonna be, like, a lot of superhero movies coming out where it's, like, no one really knows this character, and so, like, you gotta really go out of your way. It, it only just came out, like, last week, so it's probably not, like, too big right now. Yeah, I'll complete already. Um, but, like, there's a, there's a huge problem where, like, we've run out of, like, major comic book characters, and, uh, the marketing isn't really doing a good job of selling that. So, Madam Web is completely failing to convince people that it's just like Spider-Man, except it's not. And Morbius was in the same boat. Excellent work, Sparks. And I see that you've gained another new ability. Another one? Now, if you hold down the L1, L2, R1, and R2 buttons at the same time, Sparks will point to any treasure still hanging around. This will be a useful ability, or maybe I'll never invoke it, because I used to always do these at the end, like the Sparks levels right at the end, I used to like miss them on my backtracking. Because you don't actually need to do any in order to like, get any, like, you can you can do the final level, I think right, no, the final level's locked off, you do need to do the Sparks levels at. It's webbing time as you webbed all <laughs> What's the, what's the, the, the meme? She's a very dynamic character. There's something very, very hilarious about, uh, how much they're trying to hype it, and, like, people are just like, this is, uh, legit, go to, if, even if you don't see it, go to Wikipedia and look at, like, just read the critical response, like, the, the, the critic's reception. It is absolutely incredible how scathing everyone is. It, these are, like, people going, you know, if I'm gonna rip into one thing, I'm gonna rip into Madam Web, and they're just calling it, like, juvenile, like, you know, early draft, incompetent, like, just completely, there should have been, like, tons of review, tons of stuff. Um, 
and, and like, uh, what, what was the Your Movie Sucks he said, um, that, uh, that, uh, it's like, Morbius is like, it had memes, but the film wasn't, like, really that spectacular. It was more fun in the memes than the actual film. This is, no one's making memes, and the film is such a laugh, but it's also, like, so disingenuous that, like, it's shocking at the same time. So, and then he said, go watch it in theaters. He gave it the recommendation. Unable to, f to type for like five minutes. I am about to finish, so here we are. We're at the end of the stream. Uh, we've finished the whole Midday Gardens. Sunrise Spring is also done. We've done Bentley's Outpost. We've got a bunch of levels with 600 gems in them. Uh, and I like this world a, a ton. And we've done the Spider Town. So lots of gems done. See you around, my blub. My blub? <laughs> uh, we've got tons of gems. We've still got uh, you know, a good half of the game to go. But uh, until then, I would like to thank you all so very, very, very much. If you enjoyed the stream or you missed parts of it, uh, you can subscribe on Twitch or follow on Twitch or subscribe on YouTube. I love how subscribing means a completely different thing on both platforms because subscribing involves paying me money. But I don't know. I keep it open, but I, 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 I just do this for the funsies. So uh, if you miss parts of, parts of the stream, you can view it on YouTube probably soon. It's been doing a good job um, processing the video recently, so I'll give it that. But I do remember it didn't uh, do the Quake 2 stream on time. I still got like a like a, a bit there that just says video is just messed. It didn't upload. Oh, sorry. It, it like it didn't process right. I don't know. So. Uh, but yeah, no, and yeah, subscribe on YouTube, I don't know if I'm doing anything extra, but we'll just keep doing stream VODs and stuff like that, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, and you can follow on my Pleroma, m.bndo.com, unless uh, my internet dies, in which case it'll, you know, you'll probably not see anything from me, because I'm not sending stuff to it, so. Uh, but yeah, no, stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late, uh, I guess watch Madam Web, uh, watch out for AI, uh, Tomb Raider Remaster exists, um... Watch out for the weather, I guess, and use Luda. There were a lot of topics today. Anyway, have a good one, everyone. Peace.